So, like yesterday, just four examples. Quiz on this stuff Friday, but not tomorrow's stuff, okay? So, a population of tribbles multiplies fivefold every six days. <clears throat> How much does the population grow between the 4th and the 20th day? That's a little different. Where's your book? Excellent. So, here's a formula. We saw it yesterday. We're applying logs again, part 2. Okay. So you might say to yourself, well, how many do we got there on the 20th day? Five-fold, what does that mean? Not, yeah, times five, I know, but not double, not triple, five-fold, which letter is that? Where do we want to put it? That's X, right? Not half-life, not double, five-fold. The five-fold time is every six days. Which one's that? That's N, right? Okay, so what do we got? I got, it says five-fold. Does it say how many I started with? No. But what's a nice number to start with? One. Sounds good to me. So in, what does that mean? If I start with one triple in six days, how many would I have? Five. In another six days, how many would I have? 25. In another six days, so on and so on and so on, right? That's what it means. Okay, so <clears throat> I got one times five to the 20, that would be T, it's not a nice even number like 6, but hopefully the answer looks like it makes sense, right? What would that give you? I've already done it. Now again, you can't have a 0.75 of a living object, but mathematically that's what it is, right? If the average family has 1.6 kids in Canada, that means for every two people that die, less are being born. And if there were no immigration, then we would cease to exist in a couple hundred years. Luckily, there's some people coming into Canada, right? Does that kind of make sense? Fourfold, if I do this four times approximately, look okay? I think so. All right. What about the fourth day? How many did I have on the fourth day? Would I have five? If I started with one and I went four days? No. No. Yawns in stereo? I shouldn't have quite five. If you put that in your calculator, you get 2.92. Right? So from the fourth day to the twentieth day, do I want to add subtract or is this geometric growth how did it increase from 2.92 to 213.75 i want to divide don't i does that make sense does that make sense to go from there to there between the fourth and the 20th day what's the multiplication factor there how many times more tribbles do i have on the 20th day Whoop. compared to the fourth day. That's 73 times more, right? 73.2 to be exact. I better not. There's an X here, so let's put times. Right? That's how much it grows between the 4th and the 20th day. 73 times as much. If I had 1, I'll have 73 times that. If I had 1,000, I'll have 73 times that. Whatever. It didn't give you a number. 
Okay, so I'm just showing you that to kind of hopefully kind of make sense. I'm giving you a funny formula here. That'll also work. Let's see. What do I start with? I don't know. But I know it goes up five times. So how much do I have if I start with one triple and it multiplies five-fold? T2 is 20 days. T1 is four days. And N still is every six days is when you get five times as much, right? So can I simplify this a bit? Sure. What's 20 minus 6? There's 20. Yep, I do. I do mean 4. 20 minus 4. 16 over 6. I wrote it right. I just said it wrong. And then 5 to the power of 16 sixths. Oh, look. A little off, but pretty much the same thing. Okay. 73.1 times. That's the growth factor between the 4th and the 20th day. I will give this formula to you, so don't freak out. So again, remember in the first lesson we talked about Richter, which is a way that we measure what? Yeah, okay. So let's back up a bit. I got an earthquake and it measures 10, okay? And I barely feel it. It's underneath my feet. I still barely feel it. Something that's 10 times as powerful as that would then be, say, an intensity of 100 on some scale, right? And then something 10 times more powerful than that would be a thousand. So this is times 10, that's times 10. This guy, the third one, is a hundred times more powerful than the first one, right? Because 10 times 10. That's, when I'm talking a thousand, that's kind of like scares people. I don't want to do that. And plus to graph this, again, I would have to have a graph to go from I don't know, probably zero to a thousand, and even that, one that's 10 times more powerful than that. I need to go to 10,000 on this graph. Okay, that's silliness. So, what we do is say, let's come up with a Richter scale named after Mr. Richter, the first guy I thought of it, and he based it on a log base 10 system. So, what's log base 10 of 10? I'm going to call that one. What's log of 100? Yeah. So I'm going to say 1 Richter. That's going to be 2 Richter. And what's log of 1,000? 3, and so on. Now, in theory, it can't get higher than 10. Bad things would happen if we had a 10 Richter earthquake. But it's the same thing. From 1 to 2, that's 10 times the intensity. From 2 to 3 is another 10 times. So all I'd have to graph here on my little Richter scale would be like I got one today at one, one today at three. That is a hundred times more intense, but I just need to go from one to three on a graph. So this little needle that goes like this, whoop, that measures all these things all the time, you know, I don't have to use eight feet of paper kind of thing, right? So that's the basis of Richter, how it comes from. So let's look at a problem. Mr. Ed, the guy who wrote this book. He has a temper, temper tantrum. It causes a magnitude 3.2 earthquake. Five days later, he has a 5.7 earthquake. How much stronger was the second one compared to the first one? Here's a formula. I'll give it to you. Okay, well, let's think about this for a sec. If I had one at 3.2... Going up by 1 is 10 times the intensity. So if I had one at 4.2, that would be 10 times, right? How much stronger? That would be 10 times. 
This would be another 10 times. So compared to 3.2, yeah, it's 100 times. To get to 6.2 would be 1,000 times. Where's this? That's right in here somewhere. So I know my answer should between be between 100 times and 1,000 times. What's a good estimate of what I'm looking for here? Because Okay, 450, 500, all right, good guesses. Okay, my answer should be something like that. Better be between 100 and 1,000. Let's look at this. You remember in physics, we had like V, O, and V? Which one was which? Yeah, so let's kind of be consistent with that. And then that would be the final, or in this case, the second one. Okay? So the intensity of the second one you can say, compared to the first one, the initial one, we can say it like that. Some people prefer to think of it as a ratio, right? If this one was 1 and that one was 100, then that's 100 times as intense. But let's just keep it like that. 10 to the R2 was 5.7. That's the second one. R1, the first one, is 3.2. And I can write that like this, right? That's 10 to the, I can just subtract those two. That's 2.5. What is that? 10 to the 2.5. 316. So the second one whatever the first one was, 3.2, times it by 316. It's 316 times as intense. Okay? Is that a number we're in the whereabouts we're looking? Yeah. So it's, remember, logs aren't linear. That actually is... Right, 5.7 is exactly halfway between 5.2 and 6.2. So you would guess maybe 500. But you're thinking in a linear fashion. Logs aren't linear, okay? So the last bit make a bigger difference than the first bit. So anyway, that's what it is, 3.16, okay? Another one on Richter's. Vancouver, by the way, we just had one up in Haida Gwaii a little while ago. Did you guys hear about that? And some say it was a good thing, but in some respects it was a bad thing. Because now the next one, because it wasn't that big, they figure the next one's going to be even worse. I don't know. You always want to have little earthquakes, right? Because that's the plates. You want little shifts. Because if they don't, then all that energy builds and builds and builds, and finally they just snap, and then you have a big one. Because the plates are always moving. It's just on the surface, do they give a little bit? Like you want to go and lubricate these things, right? You want to slide nice... You don't want this big, huge friction. If this chunk is like wedged against that chunk, you get this huge friction, and finally you've got to give at some point, then you get the big one, right? And the Richter 8 or 9, nasty things happen. You feel it thousands of miles away. Okay. There was a 4.6 earthquake. Five days later, an aftershock happened. And aftershocks are typically <coughs> less than the original. In this case, it was 1 40th the magnitude of the first one. It was 1 40th as intense. So there's a couple ways you can think about this. The second one, if you want to call it 1 for an intensity, the first one was 40 times that. Okay? Make sense? The other way to say it is this guy, the second one, was 1 40th that of the first one. That says the same thing, right? Like divide 40 away, I get the same thing. So I don't care which way you think about it, but you better get the right answer. So the second one, I don't know what it was. 
This is where we need a log, right? Because how else do we solve for an exponent? Trial and error would take too long. So how do I solve that? Well, I'm going to do this. Okay, 1 40th is 10 to the r2 minus 4.6. What's my next step? Yeah, take a log of both sides because then I can use the power rule. Okay, log of 1 40th is that now becomes out in front in brackets log 10. <clears throat> what base log do I want here? I could take log base 1 40th and get rid of this, but is that preferred or would I rather get rid of this? What am I trying to solve for here? Yeah, there's only one variable, that. I'd rather get rid of this, wouldn't I? What's a good base for this to be gone? Log 10. Base 10? You bet, right? Because that would be 1. So that's gone. I want base 10, right? Log base 10 of 10 is just 1. So then I have that is just equal to R2 minus 4.6. So R2 is that plus 4.6. Okay, what is log of 1 40th? Negative 1.6 plus 4.6 and the second one then is exactly 3. Make sense? It's got to be smaller than 4.6, right? It's 1 40th the intensity. Okay, that's earthquakes. Let's look at pH. I don't know if that's named after someone or not. I don't know. What does pH stand for? pH has to do with like measuring concentration of ions. Okay. Okay, so it's not really named on anybody. Okay, I know of. Okay, all right. I, I'm sure I've read it and learned it and forgot it. So anyway, we have a pH scale. It goes from 0 to 14, and that covers basically every substance we know. We start here with neutral water, and that's exactly halfway in between. That's a 7. If something's more alkaline, it's bigger than 7. If it's something's more acidic, it's less than 7. seven. And if it's down here-ish, it is incredibly corrosive. Like this dissolves, you name it, it's gone, right? Nasty stuff. There isn't any in the school. Otherwise, I'd let you guys play with it. Okay, so it's a logarithmic scale. So a pH of 12 is 10 times more alkaline than pH of 11. And it's 10 times more acidic than a pH of 13. Okay, you can say it both ways, right? Okay. So if bleach has a pH of 13, how many more times alkaline is it than blood with a pH of 8? Okay, these are nice whole numbers. I'm not even going to use a formula. What does it mean to go from 8 to 9? 10 times which direction? More alkaline direction, right? I could start here and go that's 10 times more acidic. You just gotta kind of look at the wording. How many more times more alkaline is it? That's 10 times. 10 times 10? 100. 1,000. 10,000. It's a hundred thousand times more alkaline. Okay? That's only five on our scale of a log scale, but that's five zeros. Okay? Now, can you word it the other way around? Yeah. Blood is a hundred thousand times more acidic than bleach. 
But the wording of this question, I want to say it the other way around. Makes blood sound pretty acidic, doesn't it? Okay, that's what it is. Pretty easy. I don't even need this, do I? But if you want to, 10 to the 13 minus 8 is 10 to the 5. Same thing. <coughs> okay. Last one. The pH of acetic acid is 5, which, by the way, they put in uh, salt and vinegar chips usually, right? To make them, anyone eat a whole bag and have their tongue raw? Do it. It's fun. What's the pH of hydrochloric acid? Because it's cheaper than actually putting real vinegar in there, right? What's the pH of hydrochloric acid? It's 200 times more acidic. 200, if that's 1, that's 200 times as much, times 10 to the 5 minus, what is the pH of hydrochloric acid? Okay, so log 200 is 5 minus P log base 10, which is just 1, so get rid of it. And what's P? Bring it over there make it positive. Bring this over here to make it negative. Log 200 is some number, 2.3. Does it make sense? I should have said, what are we looking for here for an answer? To get to four, that would be 10 times more acidic. To get to three, that would be 100 times more acidic. Does it look like it makes sense? Yeah, sure does. Now, did you notice how I didn't really explain what numbers go where here? About final and initial and all that kind of stuff? because it, I find the wording of that question incredibly confusing. Common sense. What's log of 200? It's 2.3. Do you want to add that or subtract it? You want to subtract that. Okay, am I cheating? Yeah, kinda. But it works, okay? This I don't like too much with the wording of this question. It's okay with the Richter having a first one and a second one, but which is the first one and which is the second one? And I'm sure there's a way to teach it, to kind of make it make sense, but why? It's common sense, okay? Let's go back and look at this one with common sense. Where is it? 1 40th, what's the log of that? I've already done it, but let's do it again. 1.6 negative. Don't even worry about the negative, because I could have said, well, 1's 40 times more intense. What's the log of 40? Positive 1.6. Do you want to add it or subtract it? Yeah, the second one is less intense. I want to make it less Richter, so I'm going to subtract it from 3, okay? So. I'll give you the formula, but that's a quicker way to maybe make sense of it, okay? 